What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. How you been doing? So today I got another question for you. Should you cam your O3 Cobra? Well, it's not a, such an easy question. Um, you know, I installed my cams two years ago. It was quite a process, but I learned a lot along the way and I'm here to maybe try to help give other people some of that uh, knowledge so they can make a better decision for themselves. So this is be in two segments and to lead off the first segment, this is the most important question. I'm going to use an old adage that you've probably heard to help make your decision with this. I'm sure you guys have heard this one. Your car can be fast, cheap, reliable. Pick any two. You know, you could have it be uh, cheap and reliable. Well, it's probably not fast. If your car is fast and reliable, well, it's probably not cheap. And the same kind of co goes with the cams. Power, sound, drivability. Again, pick any two. Um, you know, if the nastier the cam is, the more overlap or duration the cam has, the cooler it's going to sound, the more it's going to chop. Um, and that sometimes can lead to good power depending on other scenarios. So you're kind of getting power and sound, but the more overlap you put in it, the worse it's going to drive. And what I mean by drivability is um, coming off a stoplight at idle or kind of like merging on the highway, you're, you know, you're in fourth, fifth gear and you're kind of just rolling in the pedal, you're going to get a lot of hesitations. And I'll include a video of my friend's O3 Sonic Blue Cobra. He had a set of nasty Comp Stage 3 cams. His car chops way more than mine. But when I drove it, it's not that it drove poor, it was just really different than how mine drove. Um, you know, if you let the RPMs fall below like 14, 1500 at idle, it would kind of stutter and, 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 and buck and it wouldn't really want to accelerate. And kind of the same thing once you're kind of rolling the pedal when you're just driving along. Yes, it sounded great. And yes, the car made pretty good power, but I, it was kind of left a little disappointed in how it drove. You know, maybe some of that's the tune, you get a better tuner, maybe that changes a little bit. So. When I talked to um, Todd Warren, who is the cam guru genius, and I'm going to put his email right down below here so you can have it. Um, Todd's a great guy. He has a wealth of knowledge. Um, it's, it's almost overwhelming how much he knows about these cars. Um, but what I recommend is you just listen to him. He's a respectful guy. You got to show him a picture of your dog. I, I think if you don't own a dog, he doesn't even want to talk to you. That could be a joke, it might not be. Um, and he just wants to help people out. And I got that feeling and he knocked my setup out of the park. I told him, look, Todd, I wanna, I wanna gain good power on the dyno. and I want, the car has to drive right. I don't wanna put cams in it and then not enjoy driving the car because to me, that's the most important aspect. Do you enjoy driving it? And right now how mine's set up, I love driving it. Um, I can tell a little bit that it has cams driving it because I'm used to how it was before 
but it drives just as almost it has stock cams. It's really nice. So the reason for that is, and I won't get too technical here, because number one, I might not even understand it 100% myself, and I'll just say that, but two, it can be pretty overwhelming. So the stock setup, there is 36 degrees of the camshaft rotation, I mean crank rotation, that both the intake valve and the exhaust valves are closed. That's just how our cars came set up from the factory. Now, if you wanna make more power, well, you can increase the length of time that the intake valves are open, the duration, and the same for the exhaust. You add more duration, you have more time for air to flow in and flow out. And basically, with engines, the more air you can put in and get out in a set amount of time, well, it's gonna make more power. So the closer you get to zero degrees where the intake valve and the exhaust valves are opening and closing at exactly the same time, the, make, the more power you're gonna make. But then you can go beyond that and that's where you get the overlap where say your exhaust valve is starting to close, it's starting to close, and before it actually is fully closed, the intake valve is open. So you have both valves open at the same time. Now that sounds really good. All those nasty cam to cars, um, especially like the LS cars with the pushrod design and the one cam versus four, um, those cars can run a lot of overlap. That is why they sound really great cammed. On these cars, you can't quite run the same amount. Again, that's a Todd question. Uh, it's, it comes into like the head design and whatnot. And I'm not here to get into that because I don't 100% understand it. Um, but you know, there are some cars that have, you know, five, six degrees of overlap. I'll just say it without getting too specifically, my car has no overlap. Um, so it's pretty close to zero, but it doesn't have any. And that's why I think I made pretty good power on the dyno. And it's also worth noting if your car has an excessive amount of overlap, well, yes, it sounds good. What ends up happening is the intake valve is opening and the air and fuel is rushing in. But if your exhaust valve is still open for a good amount of time, what happens is, is some of that boost that you worked really hard to make with your supercharger ends up going straight out the exhaust. And you end up not uh, capitalizing on the, the most of the performance gains. You know, the, the setup is, is over cammed in, in all honesty. And that's different with superchargers versus turbos or centrifugal superchargers. So it's not, you know, one size fits all, but that's also another important part to remember. Is, is the important thing. So that's the question you got to answer first is what are you expecting out of your car? Is it just a daily driver? If it's a daily driver, I wouldn't recommend camming it. If it's a weekend car and you still enjoy driving the car, well, just make sure you kind of knowing what you're getting yourself into. If you kind of go with some off the stage comp cams, yes, it might be a little bit cheaper. Yes, it's gonna sound really good, but I don't know if you're gonna enjoy driving it because it's gonna be a little bit more of a hassle. To some people, the hassle is part of the, the car and they might enjoy that. To other people, it might kind of ruin the car and then you're finding yourself driving it less and less. So that was my main goal to going, whoop, it's always right in the middle of the video. That's a blooper. So, as I was saying, that's your main goal. If it's a you know a track car, great, can it. Put in the biggest, nastiest set of cams you can put in with all the duration in the world. Because who cares how it drives part throttle? It's only a drag car. So, that's part one. The second part is make sure you understand the costs. Um, you know, and this is something I kind of knew, but once you start adding the figures up, it can really be pretty mind blowing. What I mean by that is, you know, you might just go to your favorite vendor and you type in Cobra cams and you're like, oh wow, it's 1500 bucks. And you go, man, the, the Whipple's 5,000. This is, this is cheap. Well, I'm here to tell you, it's not quite that simple. You're, you know, putting these cams in is an incredibly difficult job. Um, this is not for your typical backyard weekend mechanic. Um, you know, I'm just myself and I'm not embarrassed to say it. 
I'm just like an oil change mechanic. You know, I can do oil changes, take the wheels off, simple stuff like that. I have no problem admitting that this, was, this would be way over my head to do a job like this. And I would say it's over most people's heads that don't have experience doing cams in these cars because there are a lot of specialty tools, especially when it comes to degreeing. What I saw, your g basic generic install price is gonna be around 2,500 bucks with an additional thousand dollars or so if you want the cams degreed. And I'll just make sure I'm clear here. You need to degree your cams. You could probably get away with it and sometimes, depending on how big your cams are. Um, you know, each setup is a little bit different from Ford because they kind of threw them together. But if you're not degreeing it, you're not getting the most out of your cams and you're, you're doing it, make sure you do it the right way. So you're, when you, if you're gonna do the install with the degreeing, you're probably three to $4,000 in labor. Then if you wanna do more lift, and again, more lift on the valves, more air in, more air out, more power. Well, I think the stock cams lift about 0.390. I think the max you can go, and again, don't quote me, this is just based on my research a few years ago, the most lift you could go on the stock setup is I think 0.425. My cams are quite a lot more than that. I think they're 0.75 or 0.48. So you need valve springs. Well, now valve springs are four or 500 bucks. The install, you know, they don't go in in a half hour. That's pretty complicated. Then you're right there. So I did my head studs. You know, that's another 500 bucks. And you know, the costs keep adding up and adding up. And at the end, it's probably almost exactly the same cost as putting in a Whipple. So if you're an Eaton car, a stock supercharged car, or a ported blower car, and you're like, should I do cams or a Whipple? Well, don't fool yourself. Do the Whipple. The Whipple's gonna add you 150 to 200 wheel. The cams are gonna add less than half of that. Granted, yes, they sound cool, if that's your type of thing. But if you're after power, do the cam. I mean, do the Whipple first. So that's really kind of all I had to say. I hope this video, you know, if you find this video, it might kind of give you some more ideas. You know, if you have any questions, give me a shout. That's really, really about it, guys. Stay in touch. Thanks.